Hey, this is Jonathan Mokara for Fluency Plus Plus. Today, we're going to see seven names that we should never see in code. So, those are pretty common names. Maybe you've come across them already. Um, I've certainly written them at least once. <gasps> But I don't do that anymore, I promise. So I'm going to think back um, uh, about names that I've written or read and I just find confusing or misleading or just plainly obfuscating information. So number one, it's it. So it's something to mean an iterator. So imagine you've got a collection of things, like a collection of books, for example. Um, then you can get an iterator to one of them, either before C++11 by, by doing a for loop and taking every iterator uh, of the collection or doing anything that gets an iterator like a find if algorithm or anything that gets you an iterator and you would call that it or iterator perhaps because it's not conflicting with anything else so by doing that we are obfuscating that this is something that gives you access to a book a book in the collection we don't care it's an iterator or a pointer or variable or anything. It represents a book and that's all we care about. So let's not call that it's or it's a, but call that a book. Number two, temp. So this is a variable that we don't really know how to name it, but we know that it's not going to be there for long. So it's temporary and we call that temp. Well, it, if it's there, then it's, it's there for something. It represents something. So an example is when we swap two things. So we hold the first variable in a backup variable that we call something like temp. Why not calling it like backup or the name of the first variable underscore backup or something? I mean, there are ways out of that. But let's all call that temp. It doesn't mean anything. Number three, two. So for example, um, if we got a function that does something, takes inputs, gives outputs, does its stuff, and then we need to create an, a, new, a new function that does something that's closely related to the first one, but a bit different. Um, or it could be a variable that's, that has a name and an, another variable that, that's close to that first one, although it's a bit different, then we could call that that name two, right? As in F2, for example. Well, it may make some sort of sense why we write it, because we know it's related but different. But imagine somebody who's going to read that code and is going to see two. So he's going to say, okay, there's one of them and there's a second one, but, but, but what, what's that? So let's make the effort and, and understanding why it, the, the, the second one is different from the, the first one and, and fit that into the name somehow. Number four, that's end. What? End? Why not end? Well, what I mean by end is end in the middle of a word. So if you have a function, for example, that's, that say like do something and do something else, then it means that this function is perhaps doing two things and, and that's not good for a function. So anytime we see an end in the middle of a word, we should pay attention. Um, that's a smell for doing too many things at the same time, like no, no cohesion. Um, actually, when I talk about that with my friend Xavier, he mentioned that some components are called end or and then, and that's a very good observation. So what I mean is that some, if you have a component that's called end, then it has a single job, which is putting things together, and that's okay. But what I'm talking about is when you have end in the middle of a word, so that's one big thing that, 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 that puts two things together, so that's um, worrying. Number five is handle. So handle either the noun or the verb. So handle things means I'm not exactly describing what it is you're going to do, but just take care of it, like handle that thing. And for a name, that's a handle. So a handle for me, it's something that's on a suitcase and that lets you grab the suitcase and carry it around. Well, a handle 
serves as reaching things, so like a pointer or an iterator or reference could be considered as a handle. But we don't care, it's a bit like with it or iter, we don't care it's pointer or anything, it's, we need to, to call it what it represents. So if it's a handle that lets us grab a book, then let's call that book again. Number six, I forgot. Number six, that would be A or B or X, any of the 26 letters of the alphabet. So what I mean by that is that we shouldn't have variables that just consist of one letter, like A. Because what's A? What's Q? What's X? When we write code, it may make sense, but when somebody's going to read that code, it's going to be really confusing. Like, what all are all those letters floating around? And number seven, which is a bit, bit similar to number six, is type name T in C++. We should pretty much never call our, t our types in type name with T, because T means it's a type, right? But of course it's a type. What, could, what else could it be? It's a type name. So if we have more information about a given type, uh, a given context in our template code, that's more than it expects to type, then we should craft this information into the name of the type name whatever, right? So it's very much like, like one letter variables. When we think about it, we wouldn't call any integer i just because it's an integer, right? So imagine you've got um, a collection of books and we've got the size of this collection, right? How are we going to call that variable that holds the size of the collection? If it's an integer, are we going to call, to call it i? No, probably no. Um, if it's a size t, are we going to call it s? No. We're going to call it number of books or size or whatever, but not just one let letter variable that reflects the type of the variable. So that, that's the same for type name. Type name t is so obfuscating if you know anything more about t. Now, is this all forbidden. Should we religiously follow all those guidelines of never seeing any of those seven names in code? Well, I don't think so. I, I think that those are smells, very much like code smells. We can call that naming smells. And when we see that, or where we're about to write that, then we should think, is this really a good name? And in some cases, the answer can be yes. Say, for example, you've got a function whose sole purpose is to move an iterator one step forward, like it stood next. Well, it makes sense to call that iterator it, because all we know about it is that it's an iterator and that we can move it forward. Or well, actually, we, we know it's a forward iterator, so maybe that's not a good example. But anyway, you get the idea. If we, if we got a, a sum function that, that sums two integers, then why not call them x and y? We don't know much more about them. Anyway, that's just for saying that it's not religious rules that, that we should follow. Like, it's not that we should never, ever, ever write that kind of code. But those are code, code naming smells, and we should pay attention to that. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, you can subscribe to the channel and get more of them. And if you liked it, put a thumb up to show that. Thank you, see you next time.